Okay, so here we are back with part two of creating our word art. We've created the picnic and cut it out. We've applied a small bevel to it and I showed you how to open up your style settings by double clicking on the FX right here on the text layer. Now I want you to take a look at this box. You see, the first thing I want you to notice is that because we've already applied a bevel, the bevel box is selected. It's got a little check mark in it and it's expanded the bevel box down so that we now see a size slider and watch what happens if we slide that up it makes them puffier and puffier and gives them more and more dimension and that that's a little more than I wanted but you can dial that up and play with it and get it as um, deep or as shallow of a bevel as you like now you'll notice there's an up and down arrow here as well if you click on the down it just more or less changes um, the way it looks like the light is hitting the words and this looks like the light is coming from below the words which I don't ever use I haven't found a use for it yet I'm sure I will one of these days but for right now I'm gonna leave that on up now another thing that we can do if you look right below the bevel you see a box for stroke if you click on that it automatically puts a, a stroke around it now it put black because that was my selected color down here you can change that to any color you want and if you notice right next under the stroke and next to the size which if you dial the size up then you get a bigger stroke and that almost looks like it's matted and you can you can use that to your benefit and make that as big or as small as you want I'm gonna leave it at about nine so well maybe a little bit bigger than that let's try eleven I like that better now I wanted to show you there's a little black box over here that's because um, black is the currently selected color if you double click that you get your colors palette and you can now go in here and pick any color you want to outline the picnic with but I'm gonna leave it with black because I like that and I think it um, makes it pop out really well now up here is your drop shadow box and when you open when you select that you get three different gauges here you get one for your size and if you dial that way up you'll see that your shadow starts to actually appear around all sides of your letters I like to leave mine at about 21 play with it and see what you like this is the really neat one if you look at the distance one the higher up you dial it the bigger your shadow and it, or the farther away it looks like it's from the letters so the letters actually start to look like they're floating in air and we're going to use that to our advantage in a minute but for right now I'm just going to leave it right there and show you that the opacity also changes the look of your shadow by making it lighter or darker so I generally leave that right at about 50 I like my distance at about 21 you can type it in if you know what you like so I've got 21, 21, and 50 and a 62 bevel. Now, one last thing I want to point out to you is this lighting angle box at the very top. You'll notice I have mine set at 120. I highly recommend that when you start creating um, embellishments for scrapbooking in particular, but even for web design and blogging, that you play around with it when you first start find a lighting angle that you like and stick with that for all your designing because I'm going to show you why if you s change this look how it looks like the light source is coming from different directions you can see when I have it here it looks like the light source is coming from below the letters if I have it here it looks like the light source is coming from the left if I have it over here it looks like it's coming from the right now at 120 where I keep mine set it looks like it's coming from above and a little bit to the left if you don't design all your embellishments with the same lighting angle and you, impl you place more than one on a page when you look at it it may look a little off and you may not realize why and the reason will be because it looks like you've got light sources coming from all different directions and it'll look very unnatural so play around with that and find your signature lighting angle and stick with it so I'm going to click OK and that pretty much finishes my letters but I like to add a few little embellishments so I go back to my content 
and I'm going to look up by word and I've already typed in here you can see bug and you click find and it shows you um, the bugs that are I have available to me in the Photoshop contents so I'm going to use this little ladybug and drag and drop her right over here and make her a little bit bigger and I'm going to turn her angle a little bit I think that looks good and then I'm going to put her right there and check mark that I like her and now I'm going to apply a bevel to her too because well you have to check on her level for or her layer first and I didn't have that done so check her level and then you can apply it and you can see it gives her a little dimension and just like we did with the words I'm going to go into the settings dialog box I'm going to dial up that bevel just a little bit and this is where I'm going to play with that drop shadow a little more and dial it up a little farther so that she looks like she's buzzing just a little bit farther up off those letters let's move her right there I think I like that now let's add just for a little punch of color and to kinda balance this out a little bit let's add the dragonfly notice when you um, drag to increase the size of your of some of these graphics they look a little pixelated when you click the check mark though they clear up and they become uh, much more clear he's a little too big let's dial him down just a tad and then I'm going to select the dragonfly layer apply my bevel go into my style settings box let's dial his bevel up just a tad and then I'm going to go to the drop levels and I want him to really look like he's flying up there so I'm going to dial his shadow up quite a bit I think I like that and there you go I have a cute little picnic word art that I can use for my scrapbooking all that's left to do now is to crop it and save it so we're going to select this marquee tool and the rectangular and we're going to draw our box around it now be careful when you do this that you don't cut off your shadows you'll see that I made sure even though the ladybug was way up here I needed to catch the bottom of this shadow so make sure that you're careful of that and then go to image and crop and there you have your word art all that's left to do now is save it so we're going to go to file and save as and the format that you should probably save this in that I recommend is ping or PNG format and I'm going to click on that and I'm going to rename this picnic and it's um, with a PNG and the reason I use PNG let's go ahead and save that is because PNG will maintain the transparency of the background so that if I drop that into a web page whatever background I'm using is going to show up if I drop it into a blog the same thing if I drop it into a digital scrapbook page the background paper is going to show up and that's really important you want to make sure that you have that transparency so um, a PNG will maintain the transparency so will a GIF but PNGs are also a vectorized image which means that you can stretch them really really big and they won't lose quality now when you save the PNG you'll get this little option for none or interlaced for scrapbooking it doesn't matter none is just fine for websites or blogs you may want to choose interlaced it makes it appear to load faster on a page it doesn't really but it comes up um, one line of information at a time and then it comes back and fills in more lines until it's completely filled in rather than fill in, filling in just a little bit at a time so it looks like it has loaded faster but it doesn't actually speed up the um, loading time of your pages so it's entirely up to you I'm going to choose none because I don't intend to use this on the web and once that's saved I'm, I'm completely finished and my Photoshop is feeling a little overloaded right now I think there we go so there you go and I hope that you've learned something from this that you'll be able to use in your blogging or in your scrapbooking all that you have to do once you've saved your PNG 
is drag it and drop it into your digital scrapbooking pages. And in the very near future, I'm going to do a tutorial with you on exactly how to do that. So thanks for watching. Have a great evening, and I'll see you again soon.